I'm uh, Dr. John Stavrakos and I wanted to talk to you today about what many people consider a breakthrough in regenerative medicine, stem cell therapy. It's a big buzzword now in medicine. I'm sure if you've looked around, you've probably heard about professional athletes getting this done. A lot of people feel like this is something only like the rich or the elite get for treatment of certain conditions. The reality is stem cell therapy is available to most people. We certainly do it here at our clinic and there are clinics around the country that do as well. The type of stem cells I'm talking about and the type we prefer to use are we call mesenchymal stem cells. And these cells are derived from the umbilical cord. When a baby is born by C-section and the cord is cut, uh, of course the mother gets the child, so there's no harm to the child whatsoever. The stem cells uh, are harvested from what's called the Wharton's jelly. It's that natural tissue that's in the umbilical cord. The advantage of this is that there are documentable live stem cells in the umbilical cord. There are a lot of products out there that talk about stem cells, such as things that come from the amniotic fluid, for example, the fluid that surrounds the baby. But when you put them under a microscope, sometimes it's hard to say if there are any stem cells there. There are certainly growth factors in there, things called cytokines, um, things that really can lubricate joints and promote a lot of healing. It's not to say that they don't have value, they have wonderful value, and most people work extremely well. But when you're actually talking about the nitty gritty of do you have stem cells in there, uh, sometimes it's harder to prove. With the mesenchymal stem cells, you'll see those there. And stem cells are pretty amazing because they're what we call uh, pluripotent cells. In other words, they're cells that really haven't differentiated or changed in anything yet. When any creature is forming in the womb, when we're forming as, as uh, fetuses or babies in the womb, we're initially just a ball of cells. And that ball of cells, one cell looks just like another cell, all have the same DNA. So pretty much any cell can turn into any other cell. If you remember this from maybe your middle school or grade school biology, if they have a, a growing uh, chick embryo or mouse embryo, at an early enough stage, you can take a cell that looks like it's destined to be part of, say, a muscle in the thigh and move it to the area where the brain is forming. And if you do that at an early enough stage, that cell is going to turn into a neuron, you know, a brain cell as opposed to a muscle cell. So at a certain point, cells differentiate or change into something, and then of course the other genes are switched off and they can't turn back. So the advantage of stem cells is that when you have someone who has a musculoskeletal condition, you know, a condition like a, a really worn out shoulder or bone on bone arthritis in the knee, or for example, a really bad uh, cartilage tear in the hip that hasn't responded to other things or really looks that bad. And typically with people who are over the age of 40, because generally, like with most things in life, as we get older, our ability to repair diminishes. Uh, you don't repair at 60 the way you do at 20. So stem cells are often a very viable option for people who want to get their life back. Stem cells are very simply done. They're harvested, like I said, from the umbilical cord. For those wondering, is that safe? If the mothers who decide to do this are extremely carefully screened. If uh, any illness occurs beyond something simple like a cold, they're typically excluded from the study. All the babies are born by uh, cesarean section that we uh, harvest the umbilical cords from and the company that does these is in compliance with both the FDA and what's called the AATB, the American Academy of Tissue Banks. So the standards are extremely high. If they take a group of uh, cells and one of them looks funny, typically the entire bunch is jetsoned. I asked that group that uh, supplies us our stem cells, have you had any problems? And I said, they said absolutely none. I said, how many have you done? I said, thousands upon thousands. So uh, the track record's pretty good. If you want to give a personal example, I injected these into my dad's right knee. I had no problem with that. I love my father. I don't want anything bad to happen to him and his knee is great. Uh, if I ever need stem cells, I will without hesitation use these as well. So once these cells are taken and thawed out, they're brought in on dry ice and re-injected into the person, uh, they do an interesting thing. Uh, we all know stem cells can morph or turn into uh, a particular tissue based on the body's need. They seem to hone in on a damaged area of the body. If you have a bad, like I said, a cartilage tear in your hip, well, the chemistry of your hip is very different. The damaged hip is different than another part of your body, like a normal shoulder. The pH is different. Um, there are chemical messengers uh, floating around in there that basically tell them there's a problem here. They will go there, they'll clump and adhere to that area, and while they will start to turn into other cells, like uh, cartilage cells or tendon, What's interesting is above and beyond that, they send what's called a paracrine signal out. And that's basically a signal throughout the body to basically get mobilized and to recruit new blood vessels, to recruit uh, growth factors. So they are part workmen, but they're really mostly foremen, job foremen, telling everyone else what to do. Once you've injected, you simply wait. And typically the time frame, because people always want to know, when can I get back to doing something? I tell them, you got to be patient with this. You know, it didn't happen overnight typically. It's going to take time to grow overnight. You're typically looking at a space of a couple weeks to a couple months overall. And what we'll typically do is after we inject stem cells, we'll do what's called a PRP booster. 
Um, we have separate videos on platelet-rich plasma that you're welcome to watch, but essentially it's taking your own blood, putting it in a centrifuge that spins it down. We remove the fluid and the platelets and the platelets are re-injected back into that area because platelets are full of growth factors that help you heal. So think of it as adding fertilizer to a garden, basically. Um, and then we wait. And sometimes physical therapy is prescribed. And the hope is that if you start to feel better, better range of motion, less pain, more ability, you know you're doing something right. The thing I love about regenerative medicine, particularly stem cell therapy, is that if you feel better, it's because you're better. It's not a placebo effect uh, long term. You know, your brain can only convince you you're better for so long, and then you're going to step in a funny way or run or twist, and you're going to realize that you were kind of pumping yourself up and trying to make yourself believe it. When you feel better, you know you're better. And it's not because you're taking a pill you have to take every six hours to kind of dull the pain. This actually gets you better. So I'm very excited and thrilled to do stem cell therapy. And if you have any further questions for me or the staff, please don't hesitate to talk to us. Thanks for listening.